Curious to know what kind of mind-blowing goodness AI companies are baking up this year? By the end of this video, you'll have an insider's perspective on the 13 smartest AI companies according to Forbes. For the very best data leadership and business building advice, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon in order to be notified when a new episode drops each week. Even if you're a seasoned data professional, these startups are going to blow your mind. Believe me, I've been at it full time since 2012 and these startups, they're awesome. Hi, I'm Lillian Pearson and I support data professionals to becoming world-class data leaders and entrepreneurs. Data professionals like Cam Lee, who took his AI startup to $350,000 annual recurring revenue at a 67% profit margin within one year of signing up with me. As for the background on the list I'm about to share with you, you may know that back in 2016, MIT produced a list of their recommended smartest AI companies. They followed that up with a 2017 listing and then um, they discontinued the series. So, but back in 2016, the forerunners for smartest AI companies were companies like IBM, Line, Facebook, Nvidia, and Tesla. These are huge name brands. These are mega brands. So of course they would be in the smartest AI companies list. And lots has changed in this year's listing. Now in 2020, Forbes produced a list of America's most promising AI companies. Within that listing, they categorized the co companies into 13 different categories. So what I've done for today's video is I have taken my favorite pick from among these 13 categories, representing each category with a company. Now of Forbes 50, I use the following criteria to make my selection. One, lasting impact. How well positioned is this AI company to solve emerging global problems in the long term? Two, market opportunity. And when I say this, I'm not actually talking about necessarily market opportunity for the company, but rather market opportunity for you data professionals, where the opportunity represents the opportunity for you to actually create your own business in this market. And the third category is tangible impact. And by that, I'm referring to the visceral impact that these technologies have on our real world lives. So. You could think of it something like convenience innovation. Yeah, I did just come up with that. So let's first look at the lasting impact AI companies. Now, these companies are the companies that seem most well positioned to solve long-term and pressing problems across the globe. Among Forbes list, there was an environmental engineering company called AMP Robotics. Now, this company makes robots that identify and sort waste. So they perform recycling and reuse on behalf of humans. Look, I'm actually a licensed professional environmental engineer and the technology that AMP Robotics has created, it's an absolute game changer. Why? Essentially because it impacts the long-term sustainability of the planet for our grandchildren onward. Here, let me just give you a little statistic to try and paint the picture of how huge this problem actually is. Every year, people are producing over 800,000 tons of waste. I want you to imagine an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Now imagine 800,000 Olympic-sized swimming pool pools filled with garbage. That is actually the volume of garbage that is being produced by the human population every single year. Now, 46% of that waste is disposed unsustainably, where it could have been recycled or reused. Now, in the United States, waste generation numbers are three times the global average, but only 35% of that garbage is actually being reused. To put that in perspective for you, Germany's reuse rate is almost up to 70%. Now, what AMP Robotics does is it comes along and it uses deep learning, computer vision, and robotics to automate waste sorting, thereby reducing waste sorting costs by over 70%. That truly is a game changer for the waste management industry. Company number two is a defense company. It's called Underill Industries. Now it builds surveillance system for national intelligence. Look, look, I get it. No one likes personal surveillance, but you also don't like to have to worry about bombs going off in the mall when you go shopping on a Friday night, right? Well, that actually happened to me here in, well, I won't say where I live right now, but a bomb did go off in the mall right below me. And I live in a place where there's no surveillance whatsoever. Companies like Anderil Industries are vital for keeping people safe so you can enjoy a great quality of life, right? Now look, United States has 7,000 miles of border to defend. Of course, most of that distance is inert, but still you need some sort of surveillance in place to monitor when there are outlier events. We'll call them that anyway, right? Now what Andoro really does is it provides Intel automation. It combines sensor data collection, computer vision, renewable resources, and drone technology to produce security devices that have a low carbon footprint and produce tremendously accurate Intel in just a few minutes. 
The third company in this category is a cybersecurity company called Blue Hexagon. Now, just like it sounds, they detect network and cloud cybersecurity attacks. I'm sure you're probably aware, but back in mid-December of 2020, the United States government suffered a huge cyber attack. But apparently, the intruders were inside the system for nine entire months before they were exposed. They were in places like the Department of State, Homeland Security, Treasury and Commerce, and many, many more vital areas of the government. Senators are coming out like Senator Romney saying that this cyber attack essentially exposed a huge, huge weakness in the United States with respect to cybersecurity and their readiness for cyber warfare. But had the United States government been using blue hexagon technology, it is very, very likely that the intruders would have been detected faster than nine months, hopefully within just a few milliseconds. The fourth company in this category is a software development company, and you probably know this one, it's Data Robot. Data Robot makes software to help companies implement AI models. Now, in terms of why this is a game changer, it essentially lowers the staffing requirements for companies in order to implement AI. One of the biggest barriers for modern companies in keeping up with technology and staying tried and true on the competitive landscape is access and ability to hire data professionals, specifically data scientists. And so what data robots really doing is lowering the man hours or lowering the threshold for how many in-house data scientists do you need to actually implement this AI model and get business results. That really helps lower the cost of AI projects for companies. And in the long term, it can work to even the playing field between the haves and the have nots in terms of being able to implement AI in order to gain and maintain competitive advantage. Actually, I did interview Owen Zhang, and he was the chief product officer advisor over at Data Robot for the longest time. If you want to hear from him on how he went about winning the Kegel competition, you can watch this video on how to win on Kegel. I'll put a link to it in the description below. So we've made it one third of the way through our listing of the smartest AI companies, and I would love to hear from you. Which of the companies I just described is most interesting to you? Tell me in the comments below. Okay, moving into our next category of top AI companies, there are the high market opportunity AI companies. And so these are the companies that there seems to be a lot of opportunity for data professionals to actually go out and build their own startup in that space. Looking first at productivity software, Forbes named Drift Build chatbots that automate customer interaction. Personally, I see a huge area of opportunity for data professionals in this market because it's got a very low barrier of entry and low cost of customer acquisition. In fact, a lot of the Drift chatbots are not even AI enabled. They are rule-based chatbots. Now, to easily and quickly get people through the door, Drift offers a freemium product. How this actually works for them is it automates lead gen and it increases word of mouth marketing. I personally have set up Drift and used it myself on my own business website and how I actually heard of it or knew of it was I saw it installed on my business coach's website and so I tried it out and it was a great piece of technology. Now for premium services, Drift offers rules-based bots and automation pipelines. Only if companies are willing and able to invest in enterprise grade support will Drift get to work with the AI enabled chatbots. The next company in this category is a database technology company called SafeGraph. Now, SafeGraph creates data sets by tracking commercial activity. The reason I thought this was really cool and a prime opportunity for data professionals is that it actually has an extremely low barrier of entry for anyone that's ever worked with GIS technologies. In all honesty, a lot of the data that SafeGraph is using to produce its products comes from government and public data sets. They form data partnerships where they get anonymous mobile data that gives information about commercial act activities and where they're happening. They combine that with government and public data sets and they resell it. Actually, I took the liberty to checking out their terms and conditions and their data privacy policy just because it was pretty interesting. And they said, we obtain a variety of information, collectively the information from a trusted third party partners such as mobile application developers. So basically they are partnering in buying data, recombining it and selling it to retail companies. In terms of the AI that their technology uses, this is gonna come down to pretty simple stuff like clustering nearest neighbor algorithms, most of which can be done on a click and point basis inside of any sort of GIS. How do I know? Well, in a past life, I spent about five years working in spatial data science and GIS. So I know the ins and outs of this area. On a side note, this is a classic example of a data monetization business. This company is buying, reformatting, and reselling data 
in order to turn a profit. Regardless of what you think about the ethics on that, the company made it on Forbes top 50 list, so the status quo says that's okay. The next company in this category is a workflow software company. It's called UiPath, and they create bots that carry out repetitive processes. Why this represents a market opportunity for data professionals is this is really just robotics process optimization, otherwise known as a business process outsourcing. This area is prime for data professionals because it has a low barrier of entry, but it does require a setup and configuration time which makes it lucrative for data entrepreneurs and it offers a huge ROI for their clients. Now, UiPath is pretty cool because it distinguishes itself by using AI to build even more efficient robots. Definitely quite a bit more sophisticated than a website chatbot. UiPath's bots are either rules-based or as sophisticated as actually implementing computer vision. The next company in this category is a customer service company called Cresta. Now, Cresta supports customer service agents in real time. This is a huge market opportunity for data professionals because it actually has a very low barrier of entry. It's really not that hard to develop a SaaS application that uses machine learning and rules to deliver these type of insights. Actually, I did a whole video on how Humana uses chatbots in order to assist their customer service agents in real time in order to increase their customer service quality and retain their customers. I'll put a link to that in the description below. All right, let's take a look at the last category of companies, the tangible impact company. And this is really, as you'll recall, the convenience innovation. These are the companies that are producing technologies that just make our lives way cooler on a day-to-day -day basis. The first company to discuss here is a healthcare company called Bioformis. Now, they monitor patients' health through wearable technologies. There is quite a cool factor on that one. The Bioformis AI-based ecosystem compares data on 20 or more variables that they collect from signals off of their wearable devices. Not only that, but they're collecting data on these variables from millions of people in real time. The result of all of this is a powerful pattern recognition. This is designed to help physicians predict and prevent any health deterioration before it happens. The next company in this category is a financial services company called Lemonade. Oh my, how I love Lemonade. They are using bots and bots alone to sell insurance on the internet, which means you don't have to call in, you don't have to fill up long form, you don't have to go into an office and see anyone, you just go to their website, put in your information, they use AI to do a risk analysis. They categorize your, you according to your information in a certain risk category, they quote you you a policy you pay and you're insured. How incredible is that? I think we all need a little more of that sort of thing in our lives today. The next company in this category is a communication services company called Crisp Technologies. Now, Crisp removes background noise from calls. I actually use Crisp on my own device in order to do this recording, so let me show you how it works. Right now, with the regular recording, we have Crisp running. Now, let me do a cut without the Crisp on. So this is what things actually sound like when I am not using Crisp. It's so easy to set up and it blocks out all sorts of noise if you knock, kids running, people slamming doors, movers, everything. You just turn it on and it's like it's free trial and then $5 a month. You can hook it up also through your Zoom so that if you're trying to sound professional in meetings but you have your kids home for COVID, you don't get stuck out in the rain. So thank you, Chris. The next company in this category is a hardware company called Cerebros Systems. They build computer chips for AI use. Why? Well, if you're a data scientist, you know why. They have developed a wafer scale engine that is 50 times larger than any other chip on the market. That means more compute, more memory, and more communication bandwidth. It also enables AI and machine learning at previously impossible scale and speed. Just as a point of reference, how does it compare to NVIDIA's largest GPU? Well, Cerebro's wafer scale engine has 1.2 trillion transistors, while NVIDIA's largest GPU, the A10, has 54.2 billion transistors. The next and last AI company in this category is an automotive company called Ghost. Now, what Ghost is doing is it's developing self-driving technology for installation into conventional cars. How could that not be cool? You can install self-driving into your regular, your Toyota Prius or the Mercedes-Benz you already own and it would drive and operate like a Tesla. It was only in 2019 that Ghost actually raised $63.7 million to develop and deploy this technology and it's slated to be released in 2021. That's now. How Ghost works is it has eight high definition cameras that it installs in your car and it deploys, of course, computer vision. The price tag on this, just less than $3,500. Look, I know we just discussed a crap ton of new tools and technologies, but if you're a data geek like me, then you're probably down to see some more. 
if that's you, then I wanted to let you know that I am giving out a free toolkit for new and aspiring data entrepreneurs. This is a collection of the top 32 tools and processes that'll actually grow your data business. It's a collection of the very best I found through eight years of research and development and building out my own business, Data Mania. Anyway, I'll link to it below in the description and you can check it out there. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and tell me in the comments below, what was your favorite AI company that we covered today? Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll be the first to know when our next episode drops.